Good morning. I'm so glad we can spend some time together today. Uh, just before we get started in the message, I would like to just take a moment. A lot of you have been praying for little Samuel, who's doing well, and he keeps gaining weight, which is his job, and there's a procedure waiting for him once he crosses the line. I'm just wondering if everyone here who's willing to, if you would just extend a hand towards heaven, this is actually the posture of intercession. And so let's just ask God to continue to place his hand on Samuel and that he would come to complete and perfect health. Father, we ask your hand on Samuel and on those who care for him right now. We're grateful for the weight that he's gaining and we ask that you would continue to help him grow. And then we ask for those who are attending to him that they will be able to do with remarkable expertise all the things that his body needs and requires. And we ask that you would be with his parents, with his grandparents, and his great-grandparents who are with us today. Just let your hand, your peace, and your presence be with them as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it's so good to see you today. Uh, today, I want to talk about something that uh, you would probably be happy that I'm talking about, and that is rest rest. So we're just going to turn off the lights and take a nap for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard to rest when there's some things that just, it doesn't matter if you do them, they're automatically undone. Like if you, if you cook, do you ever have to cook again? Yes. Every day. If you do laundry, do you ever have to do laundry? My, my, uh, for those of you who do laundry, you have discovered that there's some kind of portal in the dryer that makes things disappear. You can put two socks in and only one sock will come out and who knows where the other one went. There's an alternate universe somewhere that is just buried in socks and uh, I don't know what, what's going on there, but you do the laundry and it just needs to be done again. You clean, it needs to be done again. Emails, you just, you, how many are glad once you finish the last email, you're done. It's, it's I, I never get to zero uh, maintenance on things. The, we understand there are things that seem to, even when we do them, they have to be done again. And so we, we, we work at those things and we work at our jobs and we have lots of responsibilities. But what is true is that a lot of us can develop an unhealthy relationship with our work unhealthy relationship. For some of us, our work is not just a task that we do. It becomes part of our identity. I don't just do that. I am that. And for some of us, our work is our security. As long as I have that job, then the, of course the challenge is the risk of losing the job creates insecurity. And then for some of us, our job is our status. It's our position in life. And if we were to lose that, then we would lose our, our own idea of where we belong in the world. And so the challenge is, is that we're trying to get work to accomplish what only rest can accomplish. We're trying to get work to accomplish what only rest can accomplish. So we're going to look at a very early passage in scripture that talks about these things. It's in Exodus chapter 20. And in verse one, it says, and God spoke all these words. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On that you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant or your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Have you ever noticed that when you are in, you're, uh, first being introduced to someone, in the United States of America, we have a habit. It's, it's not true in lots of other places in the world, but it's very true in the United States of America, and that is we want to know what they do for a living, what their job is. And if you go to other countries, that's actually, that, that might not come up in the conversation at all. 
And uh, as a pastor, uh, people react very different ways depending on their predisposed position before they talk to me. So if they ask me what I do and I say that I'm a pastor, there are some people who just, they get very anxious, they get very defensive. Sometimes they'll, they'll start telling me things about their lives and, and seeking some counsel. And I think I shared last week one of the things that, yeah, that, that just happens. And, and so Sue and I were on vacation and, 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 and she, she did not want me to tell anybody that I was a pastor. And, and so for a week, I was just a motivational speaker who also coaches people in personal matters. <laughs> but we were, we were doing this little experience thing together and there were some other couples that were doing it with us. And this, this one uh, a guy comes up to me and he says, I, I knew he was from the United States. He just, he just says, so what do you do for a living? And I watched my wife's face. And, 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 and she just goes, this, this whole thing is going to be ruined right now. And, and I looked at him and I said, if I tell you, it will ruin my vacation. <laughs> and uh, that had about the same effect as telling him that I was a pastor. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he went very far away from me. There's lots of things that we could actually ask people like, uh, you know, what's something recently that you enjoyed doing or what's something that you learned that you think is fascinating or, or what has been the highlight of, of the last few days in your life? Do you have pets? Why do you have pets? I have a pet. I had nothing to do with it. That's another whole story. Uh, what kind of weather do you like? You know, the last five days have looked a lot like I, you, you expect an ark to be built somewhere around here. And, you know, I guess there might be some people who like this. Uh, is there a movie or a show that you enjoyed? Is there, where do you like to vacation? What makes a vacation fun for you? What kind of food do you like? What kind of music do you like to listen to? What's something you've done that you never want to do again? Good question. People tell you important things. Do you have any hobbies? Um, these are wonderful ways to get to know people apart from something that has become maybe too much of our identity in our lives in America. Um, don't reduce people to their work. As soon as you find out what somebody does, if, if you don't have respect for that position, you can create distance from them. Or if you are uncomfortable with your position and the, and the work that you do, you know as soon as you tell someone, they're going to react accordingly. We have relationships that are important to us. We have interests, we have opinions, we have dreams. All of these are largely unknown in our culture. These are not the things that we share with each other. And uh, you might have recognized that the opening passage actually comes from the Ten Commandments. And the Fourth Commandment is the one about honoring the Sabbath. And it's actually the longest of all of the Ten Commandments, which is interesting. And, uh, and what, the, what God says to begin with, he doesn't tell them, if you want to be delivered from slavery, then live like this. He doesn't say that. He starts out with, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So what he's telling them is, this is how free people live. You see, when you were a slave in Egypt, no days off, ever. You worked seven days a week. You didn't decide how many hours you worked that day. You didn't decide what your responsibility or task was that day. You just got up and you did what you were told until they told you that you were done. And then you would go home and you would eat and you would sleep and you would get up the next day and there were no days off. And what God is saying is, that's what slavery is like. And if you're not taking a break, you're still a slave. I know that can be uncomfortable for some of us to hear because some of us actually give ourselves a little extra credit for not taking breaks. What God wants us to know is that we're more than the work that we do. We're more than the job that we have. And when work is the most important thing to us, what happens is we find ourselves enslaved and we start making an idol out of something. We make it too important in our lives. For nearly 400 years, the nation of Israel had been enslaved in, in Egypt. Seven days a week, they had to work. There was no time off. And God is telling Israel, and he's telling us, that is no 
way to live. Don't live like a slave. Now, some people have a very negative view of work in general, sometimes because they hate their job, uh, but some people consider work as a curse, and they'll even say, oh yeah, you know, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed them with work. That's not true. Adam and Eve had work. He just said, now work is going to be harder. But work is actually a gift too, but so is rest. There's two things that people tend to that drive their work. One is things they want to get, and then things that they don't want to have. They don't want poverty. They don't want dependence on somebody else. There's lots of things that drive the work that we do. And if you ask someone how they're doing, and, and they said this, imagine you said, so how are you doing? And, and this is what they said. <laughs> I am drunk almost all the time. I just, wherever I find, if it has alcohol content, I'm in. Just give it to me as much as possible. Would you worry about that person? Well, what if they said this? What if, what if you said, how are you doing? And they said, I am spending unbelievable amounts of money. Like, I'm going to run out before the end of the week. This is the most fun I've ever had. You, wouldn't you worry about them? Or if, if, they, if you said, so how are you doing? And they said, you know what? I've developed this new thing. I steal. I steal everywhere. I steal from everyone. I steal all the time. It's amazing what you can get away with in our culture today. Or if you said this, you know, how are you doing? And they said, I have discovered you don't ever have to tell the truth to anybody. You can lie. You can lie. You can lie. You can lie. And, and we would just go, I am worried about you. So why don't we, why don't we worry when someone tells us I am busy? Busy, busy, busy. I never take a break. I don't have any time off. The fourth commandment is the only commandment I'm aware of that when people violate it, they brag about it. What are we thinking? We have connected our identity, who we are, and our worth with our activity. And our fear is, if I do less, I am worth less. So we cannot, if we cannot rest, we are not free. If we cannot rest, we are not free. If you can't take a break, you will be broken. A lot of us are restless. And I don't just mean hyperactive. We just haven't rested in a long time. And when we think about the Sabbath, I was raised in a house. Uh, we had lots of rules, more rules than you can possibly imagine. There were a lot of things we were not allowed to do on Sunday. And a lot of people think about the Sabbath as a, as a day of prohibitions, just things that are forbidden. You know, there's a fast food company uh, right now. Has anybody uh, uh, been out on the New York State Thruway, uh, Interstate 90, across the state anytime recently? Yeah, half of the, it feels like half of the, the rest stops, places where you can stop and get something to eat are closed. And I was coming back from Massachusetts. I almost starved to death. It was just terrible. <laughs> you, know, you see the sign, no food, no restrooms. And I said, oh, good grief. <laughs> and I'm one of those people who won't get off the exit. I just won't do it. But, but uh, there's some, the, the new ones that they're building, they're, they're kind of nice. And there's one particular uh, 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 fast food company that uh, their policy is uh, they, don't, they don't work on Sundays. And so they, they're, they're in some of those, those rest stops. And I'm not making this up. There are people who want to sue that company. They want to sue them for not being opened on Sunday. Why? Because when I stop to rest, I expect you to take care of me. No days off. And here's the funny thing. If we don't take any days off, how do we think about people who do? It's a really challenging thing. So. Uh, anybody here ever take a nap? In, anybody taking one right now? <laughs> I, there, there's a warning on, on uh, anybody who streams my content, and that is do not listen to Pastor Bob while you are driving. Uh, it may cause drowsiness. Uh, that kind of, uh, but uh, uh, the idea here is that 
uh, for lots of us, I, I, I was with my granddaughter yesterday, uh, who is, I can still hold, but just barely. And, uh, and she was tired. And so uh, I have a knack, not just for putting congregations, but also babies to sleep. And, and so I'm holding her there and I'm doing the pat and sway thing. And, and she rolls her head into my chest. And my daughter says, don't you dare let her go to sleep right now. <laughs> she said that she hasn't had a nap. And if she goes to sleep right now, she's going to be up all night long. She doesn't want to sleep. She's afraid she's going to miss something. And some of us are like that too. We're afraid we're going to miss something or we're, we're afraid someone will think, oh, they're, 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 they're taking a nap. When a parent looks at a napping child, what do they see? Do they go, oh, that lazy little kid. <laughs> this is what parents say. Oh, aren't they precious when they're sleeping? They're so sweet. Why do you think God thinks any differently about you? We've turned God into this demanding productivity monster that requires us to constantly be at work all the time. And if we're not doing it, somehow we're failing him. And when God, this is hard to believe, but when God sees you resting, when God sees you enjoying things, it brings joy to God's heart but we've turned it into something else. God wants us to enjoy the fruit of our labor. And he intended the Sabbath to be a day that we could rest on and enjoy the gifts that he has given and the things that we have worked for, to actually take time to enjoy them. This is a really big deal. So there's five things that, and I know you're, you're panicked right now and say, dear Lord, uh, and, and just so you know, I forgot to set my timer, so I don't know where I am. <laughs> I will get done eventually. Five things you might not know about the Sabbath. And the first is that the Sabbath introduces us to grace. Um, when, when we are compensated and we're, we're paid for the work that we have done and we're rewarded for the quality of work that we do, it develops a kind of way of thinking that everything in my life is a result of my actions and activities. But rest is a gift from God where I don't have to do anything right now. Yeah. Maybe you love your work. I'm, I'm glad. God has given you certain abilities and he's given you opportunities, but don't neglect the gift of rest because that's a gift that he's given you too. Second thing you might not know about the Sabbath, is the Sabbath reminds us of our limitations, of our limitations. We cannot work all the time. We cannot get everything done. It's just not possible. We want to be all knowing. We want to be all powerful. We want to be everywhere present all the time. That's God and we're not God. And Sabbath reminds us, I can't do everything. And that's a good thing to be reminded. We are not God. The third thing that the Sabbath reminds us of is the Sabbath reminds us that God is in control and not us. Some of us actually believe if I take a break, the world will collapse. Take a time out and watch how God is still in control. The sun will still come up and go down. Everything will be as it's supposed to be. Who are you trusting in if you cannot take a break? Uh, the fourth thing, the Sabbath is an act of resistance against injustice. The Sabbath is an act of resistance against injustice. People can be treated like slaves, like tools just to get something done. If we never take time off, we'll be frustrated when other people do. And the funny thing is, technology has actually reduced the amount of time it takes to get a lot of things done. And decades ago, they would imagine days like this. And you know what they saw? They saw that we would have a lot more leisure time, which is not how it's worked out at all, because we have saved time and we have been able to do things in less time. We just slot that for more work. And so 
We get caught up in this model, in this attitude. The Sabbath resists the idea that, that, that uh, productivity is the be-all, end-all. It makes an idol out of being good at your job. We can be very productive and never present. We can get a lot done and spend no time with someone. In fact, there's this great passage in Scripture. We mostly know the back half of this passage, and it's, it's spoken at a lot of weddings, but we often don't know the context of it. So I'm going to give you the context. Ready? It's in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil. Yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked. And why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless. A miserable business. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity the one who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. How can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. The passage describes a person who's given their whole life to productivity, and the result is they're all alone. And he comes to the understanding, this is meaningless. Please listen to this. We may find value in our work, but we find meaning in our rest. We may find value in our work, but we find meaning in our rest. Our work is supposed to add value to our lives in the world. That's how God set it up. But we will be frustrated if we expect our work to provide meaning. We need rest. We just, there's different thoughts we need to think. Uh, fifth thing, the Sabbath provides rest for our bodies and our souls. The Sabbath provides rest for our bodies and our souls. This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you, what's the next word? Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I'm gonna ask the worship team to come up. This is surprising to us. While we are doing nothing, while you're just doing something that's enjoyable, while you are taking a nap or a break, God still loves you. See, God didn't create you to be a human doing. He created you to be a human being. So when you think about even when I'm not being productive, when I'm inactive, and God still loves me, think about this. What does that do for your soul? What does that do for your soul? Uh, people are exhausted everywhere. I see them. A lot of sleep deprivation. Lots of people, all they do is work, or if they're not working, they're thinking about work. And they bring that fatigue everywhere they go, and the Sabbath is an opportunity not only to rest and recover, but for intimacy. And here's, here's the challenge. When you start taking a break, some stuff can start coming to the surface. Worry about your financial situation or concern about what someone is or is not doing or frustrations or anger or fear or grief. I'm, I'm one of those people, I, I'm a big believer in the powers of mass distraction. Like, just if this is bothering me, start working on that. And then I don't have to think about it. But when we rest and these things come up, what can we do? The grief comes up. 
And instead of stuffing it down or making ourselves busy with something else, we can just say, Father, I'm going through so much pain through this loss. It is very hard for me or, or sadness or depression or anger or failed expectations. And this is the part people often don't understand about God. These are the kind of, of conversations you only speak to your closest of friends. There are people who have very little intimacy with God because all they do, all they do is talk about the good things when, they talk, when they're in their prayer. Don't get me wrong. It's good to be thankful. It's good to be grateful. It's good to, to tell God you appreciate what he's done. But all this other stuff, and there, there's lots of people. You keep waiting for a magic moment in a worship service for your heart to connect with God and you feel intimate while you are hiding and hoarding all the things down inside your soul that if you would rest for a minute and let them out, you'd be surprised how close God could be to you right now, right now. So I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads and the worship team is going to lead in a song and I want you to just rest, just rest. And if something comes up in your mind and it's frustrating to you, rather than trying to force it down, just give it to God and say, God, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? And watch what happens. Let's turn this Sunday into a Sabbath.